It's time to take off your clothes, enjoy clothes free living, and join us for Naked, Nudist, and Naturist. Welcome to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, the show that celebrates clothes free living for all. I'm your host, Frank Stone. And I'm your correspondent, Lisa Monroe, and I'll be reporting on all things within the Naturist community. So it's time to get naked and join us. And enjoy clothes free living on Naked, Nudist, and Naturists. Well, greetings and welcome into Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, episode 30 today. We're glad that you are with us. We look forward to this time together all week. Our clothes are off, you get your clothes off, and we will enjoy clothes free living together. For the next hour, the pool is open, the grill is firing up, we have a stocked cooler, fruit and vegetables off to the left, you brought your towel, you brought your suntan lotion, that's all you need, and if you forgot those, we have extras, so let's just enjoy this hour together celebrating naturism, nudism, clothes free living for all of the right reasons. Well, on today's show, we will have a short interview with Phil Oak, Philip Oak from Missouri, A former pastor, he's written a book about what naturism did for him, did for his wife, and did for their marriage. So we'll talk to Phil in just a couple of moments. Of course, our weekly correspondent on naturism, the terrific, the one and only, the fabulous, the wonderful, Lisa Monroe will be here. And later in the show, we will have part two of the interview that Tim Chismar conducted with Nikki Hoffman. From the Naturist Society. Hope you enjoyed part one last week. I know that you did. Many of you wrote in to say so. So I have part two of that interview today. But let's kick off today's show with an interview that I did with Phil Oak, Philip Oak, from Missouri, all about what naturism did for him, his wife, and their marriage. And again, we appreciate you being with us today on Naked Nudists and Naturist, episode 30. So let's head over to Missouri. We have a gentleman on the line with us today. He's recently written and released a book called Surprised into Freedom. And as I understand his story, he was caught up in lust and porn to the max. His wife had body image issues. We've heard both of those stories many times before. But then they discovered naturism. And suddenly the world opened up and all of those issues went away. And again, he's written the book Surprised into Freedom. So let's welcome him to the show today from Missouri, Philip Oak. Good morning, Phil. How are you today, sir? I'm doing well, Frank. Thanks for having me on. All right. Thanks for coming on. Is that basically the gist of the story? All these issues going around, suddenly you discover clothes free living, and boom, all the bad stuff vanishes. Is that basically it? That's basically it. Although I would just kind of clarify that naturism was a catalyst for change. It caused us to think differently. And then it was an accelerant um, for the needed change uh, in our life to see ourselves and others differently. Okay. So the clothes came off and you began to what feel more relaxed, more comfortable, more your actual self self instead of being a phony for lack of a better term. And, and you hear it a lot in nature circles, um, that, you know, what you begin to see people not as the sum of their parts, but as whole people. And, you know, yeah. in my terminology, it would be, uh, uh, it, the image of God. You know, you're seeing um, an, a fellow image bearer who is worthy of, you know, love and respect and dignity. Now, I had a chance to listen to your whole book. You know, uh, we tell our listeners everything. You were kind enough to send me the audible version. I listened to the whole thing. I believe it was nine hours and three minutes and, and very worth the while. We recommend everybody get the audible or the book or the Kindle, however it's out there. But you refer to the Bible quite a bit, and basically that's how God made us and how he intended us to be, and somehow we got caught up in society and, of course, the works of Satan himself, who said, oh, no, 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 you guys need to be closed. Forget what God said. Listen to me, put your clothes on, and we did as, as a people. But that was that's your belief, right, that even people in the Bible, well-known characters, walked around nude, preached while they were nude, right? Yeah, and as a, as a- Christian, you know, in my faith, uh, I think there are so many misconceptions about um, nudity, uh, nakedness in the Bible. And so that's kind of 
one of the target audiences for my book is um, is people who have grown up with with this faith and belief, but like me would look at the term Christian naturist and think all the wrong things about them. You know, that was me right. um, the first time that I heard there was such a thing as Christian naturists and what that meant, Christian nudism. You know, I thought the worst about them. I thought they were uh, perverts that were trying to justify their own perversions. But what that ended up being was my own projection onto them. It was my own perversion that I transferred over to them. And so it was actually giving them the benefit of the doubt and actually seeing what they believe and and listening to them that changed everything for me. Now I am one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Well, I know you, you've done some work with or you personally know uh, Pastor Jim. We had him on the show a few months ago, and he's the first one who brought it to my attention. I guess I should have known this before or seen it. I just didn't. Like everybody else, you're just kind of blinded to the truth sometimes. But he said people walked around in robes because that's all they had. Now, they didn't have pants and shirts you buy off of Amazon, you know, back then. And oftentimes, he said, the prophet would show up, remove his robe, and start preaching. And that's in the Bible. And, of course, most people think, okay, you know, he took his robe off. He doesn't want to get overheated. But, no, he took his robe off, and he was nude while preaching. Most preaching back then was done in the nude, wasn't it? Yeah, I've got my robe right here. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's very helpful when it's cold but uh yeah. you know back in those days clothing was very expensive you didn't have um mm -hmm. you know the textile industry um and so you didn't also have credit cards so when the bible talks about collateral you know um that was your cloak that you left as collateral then you yeah. went and worked you know you wouldn't work in your clothes because you didn't want to get your single garment dirty um but then you're instructed, you know, if you if you leave your cloak as collateral, you know, make sure you give it back to the guy at the end of the day because, you know, he he doesn't want to freeze um, at night because that's that's his blanket as well. So we just don't think about these things. Yeah, and even you know they they killed Jesus, they put him in the tomb, and then three days later he was gone and his clothes were still in there. So that should tell people right away. Even Jesus probably walked out of the tomb nude, right? Is that too far of a stretch? No, and um, you know the movie The Passion of the Christ kind of shows that just his leg, um, but then he's mistaken for the gardener by uh, Mary, who gardeners also would be working in the nude, <laughs> and so right. um, this stuff is never, it's always glossed over in church. Uh, don't even give it a, a single thought as well as, you know, baptisms for a good two, three centuries were done nude, <laughs> uh, yeah. practically and symbolically. Yeah. Well, even, you know, you just, you just mentioned the gardeners worked in the nude, and immediately people will think, if they're not naturists, whoa, that must have been some kind of wild time. But it wasn't. That was just fully normal and natural everyday life, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's the key. Normalization in this culture in this country, especially, we sexualize everything. And that's conditioning. And the conditioning is strong. You know, Pastor Jim, when he was on with you, he talked about the Pavlov's dog's response. Well, I lived that. Um, you know, I was I was conditioned to think that way. And, and so I thought that way until I started thinking differently and have yeah. what I call a renewed mind yeah. on the subject and on on bodies in particular, and and to see people um, as the human beings that they are, and and not objects to objectify. Yeah, well, you know, I grew up in a clothes-free living environment, so I was always nude. But I didn't go to a nudist naturist resort until I was well into adulthood. I think I was even in my thirties, and even with all that I knew. Going there the first time, I thought, okay, this is going to be wild. People are going to be doing stuff they shouldn't be doing all over the place. I'm not interested in doing that. So am I going to go there for one minute and leave? Well, of course, I got there, and nothing of the sort was going on. It was, in fact, even more pleasant and more relaxed and more enjoyable than your typical textile club or textile beach. 
hard to explain to somebody who's never tried it, but it really is true, isn't it? It is. I love to play pickleball. And so at a new nudist park, I play pickleball. There you go. <laughs> I play pickleball <laughs> with clothes. I play pickleball without clothes. That's right. Um, my with clothes pickleball companions maybe have seen that article about Cypress Cove nudist pickleball, and they, they can't believe that. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, I'll be there next summer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. Well, even a long time ago, the Olympics themselves, were the athletes were in the nude, Yeah, which I've always advocated for. Why aren't athletes performing nude? Now, there, there should, there'll be some exceptions like American football or uh, you know, a sport like that. You have to have some padding on. But why isn't basketball played in the nude, for example? That's just running up and down and jumping and leaping like we do as kids in the backyard. But we're a long way away from that, I'm afraid. Uh, do you agree? Yeah. In fact, the word gymnasium comes from the Greek word gymnos, which means nude. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's it's all out there for us to see. Well, we want people to check into your book. We're going to have you back on the show for a full length, a full hour interview in a few months. Uh, but your book, Surprised into Freedom, the whole story about this, and you get into some pretty heavy stuff. Again, I had a chance to listen to the whole thing, and I recommend it for everybody. Uh, but Philip Oak, tell our listeners how they can get your book, Surprised into Freedom, today. Yeah, the subtitle is The Effortless Obliteration of Lust and Body Shame. And um, we have a blog, achingforeden.com. And you can go there and just click our book, and that'll send you to Amazon where you can get the Kindle version, paperback, or audio. Check it out. Okay. We call it normalizing nudism, normalizing clothes-free living, because it is normal. We're not trying to make something out of nothing. It is normal, and that's the way we should be living, and that's what you're doing, right? Encouraging people. This is how God made us to be. So let's get back to what he wanted, right? Yeah, and I love what you always say is um, for all the right reasons. And so I think that's key. I got in for all the wrong reasons, but I stayed in for all the right reasons. Yeah, yeah, easy to do in our society for sure. Well, Philip Oak, it's been great to talk to you again. We'll have you on in a few months for a full-length interview. Check out his book, Surprised Into Freedom. Go to achingforeden.com. And Philip Oak, thank you for everything, sir. Enjoy a closed-free day and week and month or two, and we'll see you next time. All right, see you, Frank. All right, thank you. The terrific Philip Oak. Check out his book, Surprised Into Freedom. I had a chance to listen to the whole thing over nine hours. Whether you listen to it or read it, I recommend it very highly. All about what naturism has done for him, his wife, their marriage, their relationships with others. It's amazing. It releases you. It gets rid of all the barriers, societal, emotional, physical, mental, just all gone And you enjoy life the way it was intended to be. People always say, well, God made us naked. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) there's a reason for that. That's how we were supposed to be. So we thank Philip Oak, and we will have him on in a couple of months for a full length, a one-hour interview. Well, you are listening to Naked Nudists and Naturists, episode 30 today, a brand new show every single Saturday morning. And we are just glad that you are with us. Close for a living for all the right reasons. We broadcast in the nude. We hope you can listen in the nude, and we can somewhat vicariously enjoy this time together, celebrating clothes-free living for all of the right reasons. Well, as you can tell by the music sneaking in on us, it is time for the one, the only, the terrific, the very extra nude, Lisa Monroe. There she is, smiling, dancing in the door as we speak, getting her headphones on now, clothes free for all the right reasons. Our naturist correspondent, Lisa Monroe. Good morning, Lisa. How are you today? I'm doing terrific, Frank. How about you? Not bad. You almost did not get your headphones on in time. I was getting concerned there. Well, I was dancing too much, (laughs) I guess, or that's at least what you'll claim. (laughs) Sorry. Uh, either that or you had too many clothes to take off. We'll, we need to put a stop to that as well, don't we? Well, you we? know, it does get a little chillier in Florida this time of <laughs> year, so <laughs> there is an extra layer or two <laughs> to, to contend right. with. All right. Well, on last, uh, last week's show, we talked about the article from com that Mark put out, his uh, misconceptions about nudism, naturism, 
eight bullet points. We got through three, so we're <laughs> going to start with number four today. Misconception number four, nudists have no boundaries. And he said textiles also worry that nudists have no sense of boundaries or respect for consent. This could not be further from the truth. Nudists have excellent interpersonal boundaries and understand consent implicitly. And take it from there. At nudist gatherings, people do not touch each other randomly or intimately without invitation. There is an unspoken understanding about giving others physical and emotional space. Normal social etiquette supply, except without the artifice of clothing. In my experience, nudists are highly respectful, cooperative people. I could not agree more. I've mentioned this before on a textile beach. If I, as a male, get too close to females on the beach, and by too close, it depends on the woman. It could be 10 feet, could be 100 feet. Mm-hmm. You kind of get that look and that energy like, hey, 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 don't come any closer. You're kind of a psycho. But at a nudist resort or a nude beach, there's none of that because they know that nobody is there to get sexual on the beach or at the nudist resort. And so we do have those boundaries, whether we're consciously aware of them or not. We just don't do that, do we? I think social graces are important in life in general, Mm -hmm. and they're even more important in situations like this. And I think the first, as a naturist, if you are in a naturist environment, the first time you cross that line, you're done. At least in that environment, that place, people will walk away from you. And I think it's it's that understanding that we have to respect each other that allows us to be able to do this. It's it's just good common sense. And everybody seems to know, okay, we're all naked here. And we're not going to be grabbing or touching or making untoward remarks. Let's just enjoy close free living again for all the right reasons and the boundaries are gone let's just enjoy the day and that's always what I've experienced and I'm guessing you too it's certainly my experience and you know if I was a clothed person on a beach and I got too close and put my towel down too close to a male next to it even if they were with people then that set up that same issue of oh she got close to me so Mm -hmm. that's my open invitation when it may have been the only spot these you could get so it it's mindset, and as long as we understand what is the correct mindset, we're okay. All right, let's move on to misconception number five. Nudists are only trying to get an all-over tan. Textiles assume the only motivation to be a nudist is achieving that coveted all-over tan. But while eliminating tan lines is a nice perk, that's far from the primary reason most of us bear it all. For me, nudism is about feeling free, comfortable, and connected with nature on a primal level. Clothes are unnecessary barriers between our bodies and the environment. And take it from there. Also, many nudists live in areas without reliable sunny weather year-round. Yet they remain nudists even in colder months when tanning isn't feasible. Nudism is a holistic lifestyle choice, not just about sunbathing. Well, there you go. Now, I enjoy getting the all-over tan, not because of the actual tan, but because it just feels good to be in the sun clothes-free. I think that's what he's saying here. We don't whip our clothes off to get the perfect tan. I guess that's an offshoot of it and a part of it, but that's not the primary reason, which is exactly what he stated, right? Exactly. And and I have to, I will make a confession here. Um, <laughs> my first forays into being a nudist was to get an all over tan. Um, yeah. So when I had the privacy of a, of a enclosed patio or something, believe me the suits were off and I enjoyed it and I and and that carried over and it may have been my introduction to really understanding the freedom of being nude but I do it is a very big perk for me because I hate tan lines yeah and probably I'm going to go out on a limb here correct me if I'm wrong but probably women more than men because if women have suits on they have more covered up than men in general And so you have more of those white spots when you look in front of the mirror, and that could be a part of it. Yeah, Very true. (laughs) And the problem is that too many of us have gone for the smallest little white spots we could, even when we shouldn't. (laughs) So, (laughs) (laughs) But again, that's not the primary reason. I want an all-over tan, therefore I'm going to whip it off and get in the sun. Again, that, that could be a secondary or tertiary reason, but not the prime reason, right? It's a fun reason. Not the prime reason, but a fun reason for those of us who love to be in the sun. All right. Let's move on to number six is the big one. You have to look perfect to be a nudist. 
Well, since nudity reveals everything, including flaws, some worry you must have a perfect physique to be a nudist. But the beauty of nudist venues is that people of all shapes and sizes feel welcomed, judging others' looks is antithetical to nudism's accepting culture. We'll take it from there. I've been nude around incredibly attractive and traditionally unattractive people, and my comfort mm-hmm. level was the same. When mm-hmm. everyone is uncovered, you quickly see past physical experience and connect on a human level. Nudism helped me accept my own body 100% without obsessing over perceived imperfections. I hope textiles concerned about aesthetics can experience this body positivity. Yeah, definitely so. We hear this so much from people who had you know poor body images. Well, this is too big. That's too small. This is not perfect. Keeping my clothes on. In fact, I think I'll add clothes. And then at some point, they begin to take clothes off. They get nude and people say, oh, you know, how are you today? What would you like for lunch? It's like, well, didn't they notice that I was overweight or underweight or small or large? No, they really don't. And that's the beauty of nudism, naturism, isn't it? It is. And I think it's um, a testament to the people who enjoy being nude in, in this naturist environment because you're able to make that conscious decision to that to just not allow yourself to make those judgments. And we get judged everywhere we turn now. It doesn't matter if you mm. put up something fun on Facebook, somebody's going to trash it. It mm-hmm. So we need somewhere where people understand that the person matters, not the container it comes in. Yeah, that's what it comes down to because everything is taken away. All of those barriers, I keep mentioning that word, but it's so big, you're no longer the CEO of a multi-billion dollar company. You're just a person sitting there sipping iced tea with no clothes on. And you're also not the unemployed person who doesn't know how they're going to pay for the meal later on. Mm -hmm. You're just a clothes person enjoying clothes free living. And it makes us all more equal. And you don't have people say, hey, you might want to lay off the Twinkies or, hey, you might want to start eating more meat. No, we don't do that. We don't do that in this world, do we? In in the world of naturism, nudism. Not in the world of naturism. And I don't even think at this point that once once you're fully ingrained in the community that you even think about it. Right. You know, it's just like, oh, that's Sue over there. You know, (laughs) hey, Sue. And Sue may be 400 pounds or Sue may be 80 pounds. It doesn't matter. (laughs) It's Sue. And that's what's important. And it's really hard to understand if you've never done it, you would have to actually do it to say, you know, son of a gun, they were right. Mm -hmm. Nobody cares what I look like. They just care that I'm here and that I'm being authentic. And there comes the problem. People have too much fear that this, what we're saying to them isn't true. And they're too too afraid to experience it for fear they're going to get that backlash. So it's kind of a catch-22. It just keeps cycling. Mm Mm-hmm. We are reading from nudeandhappy.com. Uh, Mark is the uh, the guy there who put this out, misconceptions about nudism, naturism that textiles have. Let's move on to number seven. Families cannot be nudists. Even more skewed is the perception that nudist families are unethical or abusive. But the truth is non-sexual social nudity is extremely healthy for children. Being nude from a young age teaches kids to feel positively about their bodies without shame or embarrassment. Nudist kids grow into confident, body-secure teens and adults. And Go ahead and finish it up. Responsible nudist parents teach children about privacy and respecting others' spaces. Nudism allows families to bond and feel comfortable being vulnerable with each other. Right, and that, that's another one. I'm glad you put that in there. You know, these are all misperceptions mm-hmm. or misconceptions. You're right. The family is naked. Well, there must be something going on there. And there isn't. They're just enjoying close free living, again, for all of the right reasons. And your kids turn into teens, teens turn into adults, adults turn into older adults. And we just feel good about ourselves because we're not worried about, ooh, that's the coolest pair of jeans or I have to get that shirt. They don't even give that a thought, do they? No, they don't. And and I think from the body perception, you know, when you're... I only have experience as a young girl, but I'm sure young boys go through the same thing in that as we grow and mature, bodies change and we don't really know what's happening to us. And if we don't have that perception of what our parents look like as adults, as we make that transformation into adulthood, then I think that's where an awful lot of problems come into being. Mm -hmm. Kids get very shy or they get very 
frightened or they get very withdrawn because they don't know what's going on and they have no idea why things are growing or, you know, things are happening and yeah. emotions are happening. And so I think it just brings a more natural way of growing up to kids. Kids into adults and so on and so forth. And um, so families cannot be nudists. That's a misconception number seven. And boy, I wish more would try it. You know, that's how I was raised, how most, or maybe I shouldn't say most, how several families in our neighborhood were. And I'm telling you, we, we produced the most uh, confident kids. They just took life by the horns and highly successful. Well, that can't all be coincidence, right? No, it can't be. And, and you know, there is hope for those of us who didn't grow up that way. <laughs> I didn't, but I also didn't grow up in any kind of a restrictive you know, prudish environment, um, but a more proper environment in their mind that, you know, you had to be dressed at all times and look presentable when you walked out the door. Um, yeah. So there was, you know, that, but I think it's just an experience that more kids should have, but mm -hmm. I don't see how we're going to get there in this environment now, but I wish we could. Misconception number eight, this is the last one, nudism is only for the young and attractive. Some also assume nudism is just for younger generations with acceptable bodies, but people of all ages and body types engage in nudism. At most nudist resorts, the average age is 35 to 55. Retirees enjoy nude recreation well into their 70s and beyond. And take it from there. Nudism is also highly popular among people with disabilities and chronic illnesses. The community creates a non judgmental space where all bodies are celebrated. I've met nudists from their 20s to through 90s who grow with self-confidence from the accepting body positive experience. I'm really glad Mark put this out at nudeandhappy.com because it illustrates what a lot of people go through. Well, this isn't perfect or uh, I, I'm not quite the way I should be here, so I'll keep my clothes on. And I say, and most naturist nudists say because they've experienced it, no, that's when you need to get the clothes off. Exactly. Because in, for whatever reason, we can't even explain it fully. But that's when you feel better, right? It certainly is. And, you know, when I was 30, I would mm -hmm. look at, you know, people who were older and you would hear all the, you know, they're, they're over the hill. They don't, you know, they don't enjoy life anymore. They don't enjoy intimacy anymore. Wow. As I got past 30, I realized that's not true. <laughs> and I think if you keep your, a lot of it comes down to who we are as individuals. And if we keep, the attitude that we're still vibrant and alive and want to enjoy life as much as possible, naturism gives you that opportunity. It gives yeah. you the opportunity to not have to, you know, walk on the golf course and someone say, hey, you 80-year-old, move out of the way. I'm coming through. Right. Right. It gives you a chance to be just one of the crowd. And I think yeah. that makes a big difference. Now you said that's when you were 30, which is what, about a day and a half ago? Oh, yeah, just a couple of days ago. Okay, just yeah. want to make that clear. Yeah. <laughs> and then Mark ended it with saying, nudity is our shared birthright as human beings. We're agreed upon. It is natural and life enriching. And he puts a plea out there to the non-naturists, the textiles, as he called them. Check it out. Don't, don't be so judgmental until you've tried it. And then when you find out, whoa, this is great, then you'll be sold forever, right? You certainly will be. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it, I think once you enjoy it, it's hard to turn back. It's oh, hard yeah. to, you know, not constantly if you're out going, I can't wait to get home to get this stuff off um, because it. you do start to feel confined. Now, it's funny because I can go out and be dressed and and be fine. But the second I start close approaching the front door, it's like, please <laughs> get the door open now. That's I right. need to get out That's of right. this. So it does make a difference. It's a good lifestyle. This is a marvelous um, article beautifully mm -hmm. written and right to the point on the things that I think we all should consider. Yeah, no, I agree. And we thank Mark from Nude and Happy for all of those misconceptions. And we hope people pass those along to other people. And Lisa, we have to run another terrific episode. Stay clothes free, stay smiling, and we'll see you next time. Uh, you too, Frank. Stay clothes free and smiling, and we will do this again. All right. Sounds good.
Oh, she can deny it all she wants, but she is a really good dancer. Don't know where she learned her moves. I guess she took dance when she was a kid. Still has all those moves. And we enjoy having Lisa Monroe here, a breath of fresh air, a ray of sunshine, our weekly correspondent on naturism. You are listening to Naked, Nudist, and Naturist, episode 30 today. Thank you for being with us. The pool is open. The grill is going. The cooler is stocked. You and I are both clothes free for all of the right reasons. So let's get into part two now of Tim Chismar's interview with the very terrific Nikki Hoffman from the Naturist Society. I think the thing, too, with like World Naked Bike Ride, I think a lot of people... Uh, it's the one day out of the year that they go and get naked, you know, yeah. and they don't have to, they don't have to join anything. They don't have to give their name, you know? So sure. I just, if it's so fun, why not do more of it? And mm-hmm. and I, I know I'm, I'm, as I say it, I, I know the, like, for example, San Francisco, they do four world naked bike rides a year, but they probably dilute it down and they probably have less of a turnout. But if something's fun and exciting, <laughs> I was telling Roll Hallbach, I was like, why don't we have a world naked bike ride every Saturday? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I think Cynthia probably would uh, would have to hit you for that because they're a lot of work for I know, that. that's true. You're right. No. I, I agree with you. I think it goes well and and, and, and the media hops on like you mark created a world naked gardening day and, and yeah. it's all over the news they want to talk about it and it's so unique and special and you know as a naked comedian who made a naked movie like i get a lot of interviews and, and stuff like that people are fascinated that it even exists that it's a thing yeah. yeah i get that a lot too it's like oh we didn't even know you were around and i'm like oh, well obviously you didn't do much research then because we've been around for a long time it's um it's been a pleasure, you know. I, I I have wonderful girls that I work with in the office, and we get to meet wonderful people, and we get to be naked doing it. So, uh, Nikki, you you, what? you froze. You froze for a second. Oh. Your camera froze up. Oh, I. It doesn't look like it on my end. But no, absolutely not. No, it won't. It won't. So that's why I wanted to let you know, just in case I missed something you were saying. So you're you're good now. Um, and if anything happens, we just blame it on that horrible technical guy. Chris, you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, what the heck? No, it's probably it's probably lousy internet service or something. And I live out in the country, so oh, it's different. Yeah. Well, what we were mentioning about the young nudists, um, well, some thoughts I had about that. I feel like young people don't want to label. They don't want to be called a nudist. So they'll, in my interactions, like Vita Nuda through Ann or et cetera, I've worked with young nudist groups. Yeah. It's like they're more likely to say things like, oh, me and my friends, you know, I'm not a nudist, but me and my friends will hike to a nude hot springs. And I'm yeah. like, well, that's a, that's a nude activity. You're, you're living it. You're doing it. But they just don't want to loop themselves in with those people, you know? Well, it's kind of hard too. You know, years ago, um, we had like six college groups that were young naturists. One was in Pennsylvania, as a, as a matter of fact, and I worked really, really hard and they don't, they don't start when they're freshmen because they're too afraid to tell anybody that what they want to get naked. So we've got them for, for a sophomore and junior year. And then the middle half of their second year or senior year, they're off looking for a job and what their next gig is going to be. And they, they never took care to get somebody in the wings to take over. So I'd work really hard for three or four years, and then, oh, they disbanded. And, of course, never let me know. But we, we had several groups. We helped um, uh, Robbie get started down in Florida, and he's the one that does the Florida Young Naturist events. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering how, because I know nothing about the turnouts or anything on their Instagram. It's just one dude, like, grilling. So I'm always wondering, is it is it successful? Are people coming out? Yeah, they had, well, Morley has four at his, at, at uh, Southport Gardens. He has four or five a year, and there's always 60, 70 people, which is fine for a small event. And then now Robbie takes his group up, they go up to Sunny Sands, and they go to Lake Como. But you have to have a club that, you know, the kids want to have a bonfire, and they want to dance, and they want to play loud music. That's and, 
<laughs> that's what I say. When I do new talent shows or comedy, I always make sure that I, I mention this because it's it's hack at this point. Resorts say they want to attract young people. That's what they say. But then they don't understand that, that young people are not going to act the way you act. So if yeah. you're not willing to put up with cannonballs in the pool and loud music and you tell them, we want to get young people. I don't know why people don't show up when we have chili cook off and bingo night. Yeah. And well, Morley met with his members and he said, listen, we have the opportunity to have these kids and you're all welcome to join in. But know that they're going to play music all night. They're going to have the bonfire. They're going to be dancing. Yes. And they're going to be making noise. And they do the bonfires off, not like his his people live on the other side of the of the resort, but it's not all that big. So they hear them, you know, and they've learned that if they want to be there for the other um, 51 weeks out of the year <laughs> you know that you're going to have to put up with it and the kids come back the same group of kids come back and they bring their friends and then they come back because he has like a bonfire uh, a dance around the bonfire every Friday night and the kids don't have to pay they can come in for free that night so that's pretty awesome I remember at Olive Dell Ranch, there was a school bus that would pick up the kids that would stop off at the nudist resort to pick up the kids to go on to school. And I was, yeah. that was so outrageous. Like I, that it was, imagine the other kids on the bus, there's no guess about, you know, well, I guess you're from a nudist family, you know? Yes. yes. We just, we just did in, um, I think in this issue, we did a review on a book written by a girl that was raised at um, a resort in Florida and it's quite a good book. You should read it. We, we did it for our book club. Ask Cynthia about it. Well, I don't have to ask Cynthia. I'm a lifetime member. I have the magazine. Then read it. But I will. We had the girl on. She went. Um, she came on the book club. We did a Zoom. And the, the girl, the woman, she's now 61 years old, and she came yep. on. So it was pretty awesome. Have you read any of D.H. Jonathan's books? His new no, book? no. Well, he even featured Corky and I in the last chapter oh, of his most recent book. Really? His characters. His, his lead girl runs into us at the world <laughs> we're filming. So wonderful, wonderful. But he he's great. If you ever wanted to do one of his books or he'd even, you know, talk to you or something, he, he's a solid dude. But um growing up having read your magazines and um, you know, taking pictures out and hanging them in my dorm and, and whatnot, it means so much. Like I'd been mentioned in the little articles here and there smaller things uh david cole wrote an article about my comedy back in the day and and stuff but next to me right here i just want to mention like being featured the the jubilee video was yes been awesome this was so yes. cool to have multiple pages of uh of this about and they brought us back a year later so we did another so the so the fact that it's, it's being represented in what i consider to be like the nudist bible uh was was really great and my movie being featured in this other magazine. We knew that. Such an amazing write-up. And just the fact that Mark's story got where I was coming from and what I was doing, because I know he had some hesitation going into the interview about, you know, uh, this movie and what he's doing and is this really... And he got it. He got the, the passion and the interest and the... You know, I'm not saying it's the world's greatest movie. I'm saying it's the best nude comedy that's been made <laughs> so far because it's real. It's a real nudist comedy. Well, you know, that the, the thing that you did where... You were all standing. There were a bunch of you standing. Yes. That was my favorite thing that you've ever done. I thought it was the best, the best. Did you and did I, you see the follow-up a year later? The one where me and Juliana yeah. took I'll have to send you the link. It also has almost a million views. Um, Juliana and I so originally, okay, so we did the one where we stood on the lines, and that was that was great. And Jubilee it has a Jubilee Spectrum has a big following, and so they were able to really get it out there to the masses. And there uh -huh. are reaction videos where people talk about our video in their videos. It impacted them so much. Um, but a year later, they came back and asked me to come on as a guest and I would answer questions from textiles about the nudist environment. And I said I wouldn't do it by myself because I knew they would ask me questions about periods and, you know, toplessness and all this. And I didn't want to be answering on behalf of women. So, so I made sure that they brought 
Juliana in, and it was me and Juliana, the two leads of my nudist movie, The Noodles and Noodlin. And yeah. together we answered all these questions. And so they spent a day with people, just regular people coming in, asking anything off the top of their heads. And a lot of it was repetitious. It was the same stuff. But um, that video has almost as many views as the standing on the line one. So I'll I'll have to send that to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was, it's just wonderful. I, I find, um, I have one of the women in my office is not a naturist. So when she gets a, a call that she can't handle, okay, Nikki gets it. And we don't get many anymore. It, we used to back, oh, when I first started, it was, we had, we had one guy that would call up and, um, I had a young girl working for me. She was like 18 and he called her and told her that he was in a bubble bath and what he was doing. Uh, and she was just, and she stayed with us for, for many years. And she finally, I told her, I said, have a whistle by the phone. Give him a whistle when he pulls crap like that, you know, cause that's not, they're not real naturists. And we do very, very rarely anymore. Do we get a call that I would consider a bad call? Most everybody is interested and curious and has some knowledge about nature. I, I appreciate that. I, I've i had so much fun because uh, some of the people that started in naturism when I started working there had small children and now their children are grown. Yeah. And it's so cool to see how the kids have grown. And they all go through a period where they don't want to come to naturist events. Yeah. But not so much the naturist event because right. they don't want to go anywhere with mom and dad. That's this is I heard this at the very first resort I ever went to White Thorn Lodge. I, I had all these questions and they were telling me that there's a gap when you have a, a family, when you have these kids going to the resort around the time they hit puberty, they yep. either or uh, they're they're all in or all out and if they're all out sometimes they come back to it as adults later but if, yep. if they're all out that's where they turn out because I mean you're dealing with enough through puberty anyway that it's you know yeah. can be a much yeah I, I always wondered about it and then I, I kind of decided that it's like when I was 14 to 16 I don't want to go where my parents went I wanted to be with my friends so that's part of it too you know I um, it's fun. It's uh, it's sure fun. Well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, just because I, I I like bringing up this kind of, because I, I just, everybody else is so like, just like I said, happy sunshine. I, I'm going to be the guy who brings up stuff that gets in my craw. That resort that I went to back in the day, they had a rule against male genital piercings, but women could have them. And their explanation was that they felt it drew too much attention to the men. And at the time, I, I just want to get along with everybody. So I'm going, oh, okay, that makes sense. Later, I'm talking to a girl by the pool who has her belly button pierced with a chain hanging down to her vagina. And I remember looking at her thinking, how is this not the same kind of? Well, I had a question about that because I want to know who checks that. Because some of the piercings are hidden quite well. Sure. How do they know if they have one or not? You go through a metal detector. <laughs> I, I guess, I'm like, oh my gosh. And, you know, through the years, I, I had to thank um, Lee because in, in the Midwest, I never, um, we, I never experienced um, gay people. Okay. And 20 years ago now, my cousin came out as gay and my mom called me and she said, did you hear about your cousin? And I said, no, I thought he was in an accident. She said, he's gay. And I went, yeah, I know. And I, I just knew the minute she said it, I knew. And I was so thankful because he and I are like brother and sister. And some people, that's a deal breaker for them. And I don't understand that. Yeah. Same with being a naturist. Well, you know? I'm so I'm so glad you brought that up because I'm I'm surrounded by notes here. I've got all these topics <laughs> to talk about, and one of them, I'm I'm really eager to hear your opinion on this because I've brought this up to different nudist folks. I wonder. I'm just posing this because I've never heard anybody else talk about this. Should being a nudist be involved in the LGBTQ flag? Should being a nudist be another, because it's not all about sexual attraction. There's also trans and, and asexual and all these other, would we get more 
recognition and, and, and attention being included in the flag. Because when I mention this, some people can see that. And then some people say that we wouldn't want to be associated with. Well, so what do you think? I, oh boy, that's a, that's a tough one for me because we've always had, you know, Lee helped um, Murray Kaufman start the gay nudist, the, the male group. Yeah. And um, they've always been included in all of our events. They have always been able to be membership members, like a couple, always with the nature of society. We've always accepted them as couples. Um, I don't know if being part of the flag, maybe they would feel that we were trying to usurp something from them. And I wouldn't ever want that to happen. Um, you know, I, I guess I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. I don't see that there's any reason, although, because we suffer the same stigma that they do. Yes, yes, and, yes. So I, I don't know. I, I think that maybe, you know, through the years, we've only had maybe three lesbian couples that came. And finally, I got up my courage and I talked to one of them and said, why don't you come to our events anymore? And they said, because we don't like to be around men. <laughs> and the gay guys don't seem to care. You know, um, yeah. the young woman that I worked with at the Nature Society all those years, um, for 30 years at the dances, we were always with the gay guys because they were more fun. You know, and we didn't have to worry about them. They they danced with us and they left us alone. So it was it was great. And I but I don't know. I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to hurt their feelings and come across as oh we're like you because we're not. Well, because they seem to be including all these other things into the flag. It keeps changing all the time. Yeah. Like, and in brown and black people, you know, tying into, well, I mean, that's that's a racial divergent versus uh, a sexuality or an identity. Exactly. So I, I just wonder if it would if it would help us in any way. I would just, and because we are definitely stigmatized against. I mean, I can't uh, walk into the grocery store naked. I'm, I'm a pervert. I'm a creep. I'm, oh, you know. Yeah. Whereas I'm just being myself. I'm not hurting anyone. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything uh, lewd or trying to... Uh, Bear to Breakers really did it for me. I um, thank you for allowing me to participate in that article that's going to be coming out soon. Um, my my story of going to Bear to Breakers was that it was the first time I participated in this event where everyone can walk through the city naked and uh, and it's it's totally accepted, it's totally legal, but I ran in to a rogue ranger who took it upon himself, even though the city says it's okay and it's celebrated with posters and signs, he felt that it wasn't right to have these naked people. And I happened to be with a group of like eight naked people, including, um, what's her name? She's very uh, active in the movement. Cynthia? Claud Claudia? Claudia. Claudia. Claudia was with us and, and a bunch of other nudists from Lupin Lodge and from local events. And some people drove up from LA, but he made us put our clothes on for a brief moment. Then as soon as we went past him, you know, most of us got naked again. But that, the interaction with me and, and this cop, where I knew that we were allowed, there's so, we're not allowed to be naked in most places. And here we are, we're allowed to be naked, but he's going rogue and he's going to cite us or arrest us. And so we have to throw our clothes on. That did not stand with me. And I, I did a lot of, um, you know, I let everybody know about it. And I made sure I called the next day to the ranger station. And it turned out that <laughs> I ended up on the phone with me and he apologized. And he said that he had misinformation and that two hours into telling people they had to put their clothes on, he got noticed that there are these events that are, clothing optional and blah 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 but when i got off the phone and i knew i had made a dent and that he knew i wasn't going to go away and then i i talked to him and got an apology and an assurance that he was never going to do that again when i got off the phone i was i was hit in the feels in a way that i had never done by going to these events where i'm not actively trying to engage in the outside world um and and i remember when i got off the phone one of the people in the car said now you've discovered the joy of being an activist and uh, i was like mm. you know, yeah it's all good i think i, just, I, I think we should do more of that is what i'm saying i feel like we should we should push it more and it's going to be tough in the beginning but you know um 
so was it for gay rights and Harvey Milk and you know it, it, it's going to yeah. be a little rough but then also you change the culture when more people instead of those people were your neighbor or your brother or your friend you know well it's I always tell people that um, your golf league that you belong to there's there's nature in there your bowling league um, the the library you you walk in the library and there's there's going to be a nature in there whether you know it or not. And I've had some some wonderful education moments. I went back to college when I was working for Lee. I went, I had never gone to college. And I went when I was 40 years old and I had a, a shirt on in one of the classes. I was wearing my nature shirts because I loved it. But um, I had one that says, ask me about naturism. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting in the front of the class because when you go back to college, when you're an adult, you don't sit in the back, you sit right up front. And they were, you had to call on people. And this guy in the back says, I want to talk to that lady up there that, that tell me about naturism. So I got up and I did. And the professor asked me to come back and speak to his college age students about naturism. And it was wonderful. I absolutely loved it. Good questions, because I was all prepared for them not to ask me any questions. So I had written out questions and answers. Sure. And so I asked them, you know, do you have any questions? And they all look, you know, like kids do in a classroom. And I said, I'll bet you want to know. And I would read off a question. And yeah. you see him just leaning in closer, like, what's she going to say next? And, of course, I had magazines sitting there, and I let them take the magazines. So I probably didn't get any members. But when they're 35 and 40 and they have to vote for people or they are talking about naturism, they'll have a little bit of knowledge about it. And that's my goal always is give them a little bit of good information. Absolutely, because we are the only nudists that they may ever see. So instead of hearing about those people, it's, oh, no, she was she made sense and she was a decent, normal person. She, you know, this is just what they're into. I let me let me tell you a quick let me tell you a quick story, because this one this one really did a, a number on me. So um, I, I told you I, I've gotten more active in, in politics in Nevada and uh, a lot of the people can be stuffy and uptight. <laughs> and so I was doing some business um, with comic books and writing with some somebody who was connected to those stuffy uptight folks and uh somebody told her not to do business with me because he's a pervert and so she <laughs> asked a former cop a former police officer who ran for county commissioner and the guy has a big cop mustache and he, he's a tough guy you know all this and so she asked him about you know his friend tim the pervert and he said and this was the quote he said uh <clears throat> he's not a pervert he's a nudist there's a difference and it was just like i got through to him he got yeah. without me being there because you yeah. never know what people are saying when you're not around. But without me being there, he defended me and he said that there was a difference. Yes, yes. And that's that's whether you whether you hand somebody a magazine to look at or you answer their question honestly or you you use the right terms. Yes, she has breasts. He has a penis, you know, using the right terms. My kids always use the right terms. <laughs> right, not, not peewee, pee-pee and winky and all this. And, and that, that's one of the things people say is like, well, if nudity was allowed, how would I explain that to my, by nature, by what do you say with a naked horse, you know? <laughs> well, kids are naturally nudists. Of course. They don't want to wear clothes. They yes. run around naked and people laugh and laugh. And I remember at... One of the very first gatherings I went to, we were having a woman's workshop and we were all sitting around and one of the women had a little boy yeah, and he was maybe three and he was just having a ball playing with his penis and she kept taking her hand and like brushing him away and finally I had to look at her and I said, Diane, really, just leave him alone. We all know that he's enthralled with it. He's never been enthralled of that. So just let it be. And nobody paid any attention and you know he stopped because nobody was paying attention to him so it's the same thing with nature you know so so we're not asking them to allow us allow us to go naked um in the on a beach with everybody else no we'd rather be at a nude beach with our own kind you know um so why can't we have those little places 
Yeah, it would be hurting. And it, and it's funny having you and I talk about it because we're preaching to the choir. We both get it. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Some of the things people say to me are, uh, I never even think of like uh, the erection question where it's always like, oh, aren't you always walking around with an erection? Really? With families and elderly people and kids? No, that's not, that doesn't even, no. It's not even. No, but, but, but you know, what? I you now you brought up a subject dear to my heart because yeah. I, I hadn't been at the Nature Society for very long and I got a call from a man who wanted to go um, he wondered if it was better to go to a nude beach or a resort. And I said, well, I said, if you've never been before, a beach is probably better. And he's he said, okay. He said, do I have to, do I have to strip off when I'm going to it? And I said, no, you can just go and, you know, when you're comfortable, you'll take your clothes off. And he said, he goes, well, what if I, um, well, you know, what if I, um, I, and I said, get an erection? And there was complete silence on the phone because I brought it up. And I said, well, I said, you know, I said, that's why nature's carry a towel to sit on. Sure. But it's also very handy for a man if he gets a little excited or whatever, you know, cross your arms, whatever the case may be. And I said, go in the water. And I said, if that doesn't work, there's always a woman there with a stick. And he just lost it then. He just, sure. you know, and you have to put a little humor in it with him. Yeah. Yeah. When I mean, I'm certain it's, you know, we're all fun loving people and sure. human. So, um, I love being naked in nature. I love hiking trails. I love the wilderness. It always just came natural for me. I, I remember doing naked yoga poses at a, at a retreat years ago when I was in college. And just it just seems like, I mean, clothes is the unnatural thing there. We're bringing something in. It's leaves and trees and animals, and it just feels right to be naked. In. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's why I love, I love the articles that Mark and Kathy do when they go hiking. And he's talking about the the cactus or the the flowers that are blooming in the desert or whatever and i'm just like yeah get it it's why would you want sweaty clothes on and then you get to a to a hot spring hop in you know it's it, well, it's why, normal why have the clothes hang on you wet when you get out of the pool it's so much exactly. to dry off all together yeah 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 I'll tell you a place. I, I would like to visit all 48 of the United States states and visit nude events and nude areas. I saw such beautiful pictures from Vermont. Before I die, I want to visit some of these waterfalls. And just Vermont looks beautiful for nudism. Yes, it is. It is. I was up there I, right before COVID. I got to Vermont. It was beautiful. It's, I, I don't know. I find something to love in every state I go in. That's great. There, there's something, you know. Well, I want to I wanna, uh, allow an opportunity for you to plug anything that's going on with the Nature of Society right now. I got to tell you, I love your calendars, by the way. I bought the last one and I have the current one. It's right next to my desk. Your calendars are, are just a lot of fun. But what, what is there anything you'd like to plug or say that is going on for the rest of the year or plans for next year? Because you've got the podcast, you've got Flow <laughs> Free and wherever else this ends up. So. Well, we will have a Western gathering again next year, so uh, Cynthia's gonna uh, gonna work on it. I'm not sure where we're gonna go yet. Um, I'd like to do one, like I said, in Oklahoma. So we're we're thinking about that. Um, I just think that everybody should go to our website. We've got frequently asked questions on there, and you know, I have been known to sell clothes to nudists. What? Have a, yeah, I do. I do. I'm sorry, but you know, we have to advertise the Nature Society, so we have T-shirts that we sell. And I am a really good salesperson, so do go online and buy something. It's www.naturesociety.com. Call our office. All of us would be, be more than happy to answer your questions and talk to you. And I think everybody ought to try it just once. And if you don't like it, you're crazy, but that's okay. We're all crazy. We are all crazy. That is you for sure. Us. Okay. Thank you for joining me, Nikki Hoffman, the Nature Society. So for CloseFree.com, I am Tim Chismar, and stay naked. Thanks, Tim. And there you go, part two, the final part of Tim Chismar's interview with Nikki Hoffman. We thank Tim for giving us the interview. And, of course, we thank Nikki Hoffman for all of her great information on the Nature Society and naturism in general. Well, thank you for being with us today on Naked Nudists and Naturists, episode 30 today. We give you a brand new show every Saturday morning at 6 o'clock a.m. Eastern Time. Continue to join us. Check us out on our website, nakednudistsandnaturists.com, Spotify, Google, Amazon slash Audible, Apple Podcasts. 
And also on Twitter. You can write us anywhere, anytime, anyplace. And uh, we thank you for being with us uh, today. Plan to join us for every single one of our shows here and have your clothes off when you're listening. We have our clothes off when we're broadcasting, enjoying the naturist life. We celebrate clothes-free living for all. Remember to enjoy being naked and join us again for Naked Nudist and Naturist. We drop a brand new show every Saturday morning, so come back and join us. Have your clothes off when you do for Naked Nudist and Naturist. Have a great clothes-free day.